Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, we're gonna continue in our journey of looking at becoming a software architect by taking a look at part three. Back in lesson 86, when we took a look at how to make sure you're prepared for the journey to become a software architect, as well as some of the expectations of an architect. Uh, then in the last lesson, number 87, uh, we looked at how to develop a personal roadmap and radar. So at this point, if this is the first lesson that you're seeing, I would encourage you to pause this lesson and go back and take a look at lesson 86 and 87 before continuing. Now in this lesson, 88, uh, we're gonna be focusing on how to start gaining that technical breadth and maintain that technical breadth, but also I'm going to add in also how to start gaining that industry knowledge as well. It's part of this whole pathway in our uh, kind of roadmap here. And so let's take a look at focusing on technical breadth. Um, in lesson three, um, which if you haven't seen that, you can look at that after this video, or you can certainly pause and take a look at that video first. Um, but in lesson three, I kind of introduced the knowledge triangle. Um, Knowledge triangle has three levels of knowledge. The stuff you know at the top of the triangle, these are things that you're an expert in. You do this every day. And then the next level is the stuff you know you don't know. You're familiar with this kind of technology platform language, but you really can't use it effectively. You just know about it. And then the last part of the triangle is stuff that you don't know that you don't know. This is all the stuff that you have no idea even exists in the world that would be perfect for your problem. And in lesson three, I identified the stuff you know as what's called our technical depth. But the stuff you know, combined with the stuff you know you don't know, is really that technical breadth. Now, what I'd like to do in this lesson is really kind of show you in the roadmap to becoming a software architect how this triangle of knowledge changes. So I wanna start out at the beginning of your career as a junior developer, you start coding and start to become a developer. Uh, notice what your knowledge triangle looks like. Now, first of all, we observe that the real focus is at the top of the triangle, the stuff you know, whereas the stuff you know you don't know is fairly small. As a matter of fact, if you look on the right-hand side, you'll notice the technical depth and technical breadth. Both of these lines are fairly close together. In other words, we don't have a whole lot of technical breadth. Then as we progress in our career to more of a senior developer, look what happens. We start increasing the level of the stuff you know because we take the stuff that we don't know that we don't know and learn new frameworks and tools and become experts in those. And really what we're doing is we're really bypassing that stuff you know you don't know, that middle part of the triangle. And notice again, even as a senior developer, the lines between technical depth on the right-hand side and technical breadth are still really close. Okay, and this is normal. And this is actually a proper knowledge triangle for a developer. However, let's transition into software architecture. And when we transition to become a software architect, look what happens. So when we start out with architecture, let's say as a junior architect, notice that I start increasing my technical breadth at the sacrifice of my technical depth. And this is what I talked about in lesson three, really focusing on that middle area. And then in terms of maintaining your technical breadth, what happens as we start to progress into more of a senior architect, notice, that I start to get the stuff you don't know that you don't know into the awareness that these tools and frameworks exist, um, but I keep them in the middle part of the triangle. I still maintain a level of technical depth at the top, but really the focus becomes the middle area of gaining that technical breadth. And as a matter of fact, look on the right-hand side. Uh, look at the difference now between the technical depth and technical breadth. And so you can see that big difference. As a matter of fact, to summarize this up, uh, if we look at the typical knowledge triangle of a software developer, um, notice again, the focus is really on technical breadth and or technical depth. And that technical depth and breadth are pretty close together. But as we kind of saw in that transition, a software architect 
has a much different knowledge triangle. As a matter of fact, we tend to know a lot more, or I should say, let's put it this way, we tend to know less about a lot more <laughs> in terms of knowing a lot about fewer things. And so in other words, um, notice the technical breadth is what we really focus on as a software architect. And so you can kind of, throughout your career, really chart what your knowledge triangle actually looks like um, and balance that appropriately to really become either an effective software developer or an effective software architect. Now, in lesson three, uh, I talked about how to gain this technical breadth. And what I did was I introduced what I call the 20 minute rule, where 20 minutes a day in the morning while I'm having coffee or tea before checking email, and that's an important part, before checking email, spend 20 minutes to work on focusing on your technical breadth. Um, this kind of cadence uh, allows you to really um, start gaining this breath without a lot of sacrifice. As a matter of fact, in lesson three, I talked about my three favorite resources, and that was the ThoughtWorks Technology Radar, which I've provided the link there. Please go to that. Um, probably my favorite resource, which is InfoQ, I-N-F-O-Q.com, which has a host of free uh, podcasts, articles, presentations. These are all free. And as a matter of fact, um, I get pushed through email uh, a huge laundry, laundry list of all these buzzwords. And I look through them, and if I see something I'm not familiar with, I go take a look at it. And also, I tend to leverage the DZone ref cards because when I'm looking at technical breadth, I want to know about something, but I don't have to be an expert in it. And these technical cheat sheets are probably the best way of becoming familiar with something that you have no idea exists. All right, fantastic. Now, that's good for technical breadth, but what about industry knowledge? I want to talk about that in terms of the roadmap here, because while we're starting to focus on technical breadth to make that transition to become a software architect, at the same time, we also need to satisfy that fifth core expectation of an architect, and that was to have a certain level of business domain knowledge, industry knowledge. Let's talk about how to gain that knowledge uh, at, in this transition to become a software architect. Hands down, by far, the absolute best way that I can tell you of how to gain industry knowledge as a senior developer or tech lead is to start asking questions. If you are in a meeting and you don't understand a particular concept a business stakeholder or analyst or even product owner is talking about, take time to ask and say, I'm sorry, I don't understand that term. Can you explain it in a little more detail? Or maybe, you know, offline, ask that kind of question. Uh, if you've got a story card and you see a term, a business term or concept you don't understand, now's the time to ask. And, and please, ask before you become a software architect, because once you become a software architect, it is an expectation that you're supposed to know these things. As a matter of fact, aside from asking questions, there's all sorts of great resources um, book-wise. Um, in trading, for example, there's a couple of really good uh, books. Uh, a lot of uh, books by Hal McIntyre, for example, in trading, um, really, he does just a wonderful job at kind of explaining some fairly difficult terms in the trading industry and securities industry. Others uh, books on understanding the insurance industry, retailing, biotech, um, corporate or investment banking. As a matter of fact, any industry you have, and here's the little secret of how to find where these resources are, is simply go to any sort of book website, for example, like Amazon. And right here, what you can do in the search area is type in the words, for example, trading industry or retail industry, insurance industry, biotech, or even banking, whatever your industry is. And then you can see all of the books that come out there. And so this is a good resource to start picking out some introductory guides or maybe even the dummies guides to certain industries. I mean, if you land a job in biotech, um, you need to be able to know that industry in order to become an effective software architect. And so these, these resources are the place to really go. Fantastic. All right. So, so that's really about starting to focus on technical breadth and maintaining it. Um, in the next lessons, we'll take a look at learning architecture styles and patterns and starting to focus on trade-off. 
in our journey. Uh, let me show you a couple of free resources that we have available for you. Um, Neil Ford and I uh, started the Foundations Friday Forum. Um, and this is a free 30-minute forum that we do on the last Friday of the month at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, where you can register for these. And we have various topics. Uh, for a matter of fact, uh, the one coming up in June um, is on... Um, the many, I think we titled it, The Many Faces of Microkernel Architecture. And so uh, this is a way where we're spending 30 minutes, we're going to talk about something, but it's also an open question answer forum. And so please take advantage of that. It's like being able to have uh, Neil and I on the phone with you for a half an hour once a month, which is kind of cool. Um, our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which we published in February of 2020, uh, is another great source. Uh, this book we really did gear towards the transition from developer to architect in terms of understanding those fundamentals. And so I really would encourage you uh, to take a look at that book as well. Um, a couple of years ago, I was at a, an O'Reilly Software Architecture Conference and did an interview about transitioning to become a software architect. And another short 10 minute video, which might give you some tips if you haven't already seen that. Um, also, another free resource um, is where these videos are housed. I call it Software Architecture Monday. And every other Monday, with the exception of the series here with the roadmap, I, I do a, a free lesson, five to 10 minute video in some aspect of software architecture, another good go-to place in the transition here as well. Um, for more formal training, you can go to my upcoming events or my training page, and I do have full day classes and half day classes on some aspect of microservices or software architecture. And that's where we can get more, more formal training uh, in there. And then finally, um, please leverage the areas of articles, books, and videos. Uh, I, uh, every time I run across a great article or book that I think, you know, every architect should know this, I, I add it to my website here. And so this is just a, a great way of keeping tabs with saying, what should I read next? <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, so this has been Lesson 88, Part 3 of Becoming a Software Architect. Stay tuned next Monday, because I'm doing these every week on Lesson 89, where we'll do Part 4, which um, will, at a minimum, uh, take a look at, on this transition, starting to understand the various architecture styles and patterns. And so um, thank you all so much for listening. Stay tuned, and uh, good luck in your journey to becoming a software architect. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye, everyone.